Hello and welcome to Altcoin XP. My name is Anthony and today I'm here to talk all about the Ethereum ERC20 token standard. Let's start by telling you that ERC stands for Ethereum Request for Comments. A request for comments is a form of proposal whose aim is to define standards and practices. This is different from an Ethereum improvement proposal because an EIP makes changes to the actual code of Ethereum and ERC is more like guidance on how to use Ethereum features. At least that's how it seems to be defined within the Ethereum community. Personally, I would think that since an EIP is also open for comments, that it would too technically be an ERC. However, I'm finding that since these technologies are so new, some terminologies are adapted from others and others aren't exactly defined or practiced yet. Which really sucks for people who want to try to set standards or do research from the outside. But that's how it goes, so I digress. Now that we know what ERC means, we can understand that ERC20 is a number assigned to a specific ERC proposal which intends to standardize how Ethereum contracts should be used, how we should interact with them, and how they should interact with each other. The proposal is called the ERC-20 token standard, but I'll be referring to it as the ERC-20 contract standard in this video, which may be wrong and screw up the standardization Fabian may be trying to set, but from the way I see it, ERC-20 is an aim to outline how a contract should function. It's not possible to standardize how a token functions, because a token is inanimate by itself. A token's function is dictated by the contract. But who knows, maybe my thinking is completely wrong. Anyway, if contracts follow standard definitions, they'll act predictably instead of being able to unknowingly do crazy things, like uncontrollably bet all of its tokens on 22 black. To accomplish this, ERC20 defines a list of API calls considered safe for a contract to employ. You can think of an API call as an instruction the contract can perform. In theory, sticking to these definitions will prevent contracts from misbehaving. Following that, the ERC-20 contract standard allows contract developers to write contracts in a way in which they can interact with all other ERC-20 token contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, thus creating an ecosystem of interoperability between contracts. One other effect of this is that if a token follows the ERC-20 standard, it will be perceived as safe to invest in by other people. However, this shouldn't tell you the contract and in turn your investment is void of all risks. As with all code and software, best practices are for you to assume everything is very buggy and therefore you should only risk what you can afford to lose or become public knowledge. So that's basically ERC-20 in a nutshell. It's a way to standardize how token contracts interact with each other in order to prevent DAO-like chaos as well as increase interoperability between contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. But since this is an all about video, I do want to mention two more things related to ERC-20. First, I want to touch on the difference between an ERC-20 token and an ERC-20 compatible token. This came up when I was recently reading about Minimi an Ethereum token contract which calls itself an ERC-20 token with extra functionality. I have little knowledge of Minimi's purpose and do not know what its extra functionality is, but having extra functionality compared to an ERC-20 token makes it less safe in my mind from an investment standpoint. Therefore, you shouldn't trust as much as a full ERC-20 token contract as these extra features may not be tested as thoroughly to be considered safe. Because of its additional features, Minimi should be considered an ERC-20 compatible token. I believe that terminology is a better descriptor of what it is. I say this because all ERC-20 token contracts are only partially compatible with all Minimi tokens. Meanwhile, Minimi is compatible with all ERC-20 token contracts. I know Swarm City uses Minimi instead of the standard ERC-20 token contract. This isn't to say Minimi and Swarm City are unsafe, but that they require additional research before investing in these things. My last quick point, in addition to ERC-20, there's also ERC-223, which intends to solve some issues its creator sees with ERC-20. If you guys are interested, I can go into more detail about that in another video. But for now, 
that's all for today. If you like this video and want to support me, you can help me win the YouTube popularity contest by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. If you want to see more videos like these, please donate Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash to the addresses on screen and in the video description. Your donations go directly to loan sharks who want it and my life. If you want to directly support me, please whitelist this YouTube channel in your adblock software. Thankfully, my loan shark doesn't know the password to my AdSense account. Lastly, follow me on Twitter and the AllCoinXP subreddit because I don't know. Those are other places I exist on and can be reached at. Thank you.